this came highly recommended. Mm -hmm. I do like a nice Kentucky whiskey once in a while. I, I'm relatively fond of this stuff. Yeah, and I've never had this. Old Forster. Sounds old school. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> Let's see, how do we start this one off? It starts with a drink. Yeah, let's read the masthead first. The Lamanites come against the people of God. Again? Uh, converted Lamanites refuse to take up arms. More conversions. Okay. <laughs> Verse 1. And, uh, mm. Oh, that's... Whoa. Wow. Ah. Oh, yeah. And it came to pass that the Amalekites and the Amulonites and the Lamanites who were in the land of Amulon and also in the land of Helam and who were in the land of Jerusalem of course we're talking about uh, the one on here <laughs> somewhere here uh, and in fine all the land round about you could have just said all the land round about and saved a lot of space. Uh, uh, who had not been converted and had not taken upon them the name of Anti-Nephi-Lehi were stirred up by the Amalekites and the Amulonites to anger against their brethren. Two. And their hatred became exceeding sore against them, even insomuch that they began to rebel against their king, insomuch that they would, uh, that that they began to rebel against their king, insomuch that they would not that he should be their king. Therefore, they took up arms against the people of. Anti Nephi Lephi Lehi. <sighs> Three. Now the king conferred the kingdom upon his son and called his name Anti Nephi Lehi. Nice name. It's better than Hymni, I guess. It sounds more like a slogan than a name, though. Anti-Nephi-Lehi. Which is really weird. If they're pro-Nephi-Lehi, why are they anti-Nephi-Lehi? I guess I'm just not smart enough to understand that one. Chime in. Let me know. Edumacate me, please. <sighs> Four. And the king died in that selfsame year that the Lamanites began to make preparations for war against the people of God. Five. Now when Ammon and his brethren and all those who had come up with them, with him, saw the preparations of the Lamanites to destroy their brethren, they came forth to the land of Midian, and there Ammon met all his brethren and from thence they came to the land of Ishmael, that they might hold a council, council with King Lamoni, and also with his brother Anti-Nephi-Lehi. 
what they should do to defend themselves against the Lamanites. Six. Now, there was not one equal, wait, but there was not one soul among all the people who had been converted unto the Lord that would take up arms against their brethren. Nay, they would not even make any preparations for war. Yea, and also their king commanded them that they should not. King Gandhi. <laughs> Uh, seven. Now, these are the words which he said unto the people of, uh, unto the people concerning the matter. I thank my God, my beloved people, that is our great God, has in goodness spit, sent these, our brethren and Nephites, unto us to preach unto us and to convince us of the traditions of our wicked fathers. <sighs> Eight. And behold, I think, I thank my great God that he has given us a portion of his spirit to soften our hearts, that we had opened a correspondence with these brethren, the Nephites. Nine. And behold, I also thank my God that my opening it, this correspondence, but by opening this correspondence, we have been convinced of our sins and of the many murders which we have committed. We weren't aware of them before. Really? I'm afraid of you. Ten. And I also thank my God. Yay! My great God, that he hath granted unto us that we might repent these things, and also that he hath forgiven us of those our many sins and murders, which, which we have committed, and taken away the guilt from our hearts. They don't feel guilty about him anymore. Through the merits of his son, who hasn't been born yet, so he hasn't died yet, so your redemption is on hold. It's on back order, Biot. Eleven. And now, behold, my brethren, since it has been all that we could do, parenthesis, as we were the most lost of all mankind, in parenthesis, to repent of all our sins and the many murders which we have committed and to get God to take them away from our hearts. For it was all we could do to repent sufficiently before God that he would take away our stain. Got those blood stains out. Twelve. Now, my best beloved brethren, since God has taken away our stains, I didn't know God did laundry. <laughs> Is it dry cleaning or? I don't know. Are they beating it on a rock? Uh, taken away our stains that our swords have become bright. He cleans swords too. Uh, then let us stain our swords no more with the blood of our brethren. Thirteen. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, let us retain our swords that they be not stained with the blood of our brethren. Which they just said before. Uh, for perhaps if we should stain our swords again, they can no more be washed bright through the blood of the Son, cap capitalized, uh, of our great God, which shall be shed, which shall be, hasn't happened yet, be shed for the atonement of our sins. 
Yeah, this doesn't make sense to me. Sorry, folks. Don't get it. 14. And the great God has had mercy on us and made these things known unto us that we might not perish. Yay! And he has made these things known unto us beforehand because he loveth our souls as well as he loveth our children. Therefore, in his mercy, he doth visit us by his angels, that the plan of salvation might be known unto us as, uh, well, as unto future generations, who will have to take your word for it, because no more angelic visitations. I mean, I'm not getting any. <laughs> Fifteen. And how merciful is our God! And how and now behold, since it has been as much as we could do to get our stains taken away. Uh, from us that our swords are made bright, let us hide them away, that they may be kept bright as a testimony to our God at the last day, which is Saturday, I believe, uh, or at the day that we shall be brought to stand before him to be judged, that we have not stained our swords in the blood of our brethren since he imparted his word unto us and has made us clean thereby. 16. And now, my brethren, if our brethren seek to destroy us, behold, we will hide away our swords. Yea, even we will bury them deep in the earth that they may be kept bright as a testimony that we have never used them at the last day, and if our brethren destroy us, behold, we shall go to our God, and shall be saved. 17. Oh. Really nice. First shot took me off guard, though. I'm used to that smooth scotch. This one here, yeah, it's a smooth mule kick. <laughs> it's smooth, to the point. All right. Where the fuck am I? 17. And now it came to pass that when the king had made an end of these sayings, and all the people were assembled together, they took their swords and all the weapons which uh, were used for the shedding of man's blood, and they did bury them deep in the earth. Climb in with them, guys. You may as well. 18. And this they did, it being in their view a testimony to God and also to men that they never would use weapons again for the shedding of man's blood. And this they did, vouching and covenanting with God that rather than shed the blood of their brethren, they would give up their own lives. And rather than take away from a brother, they would give unto him. And Rather than spend their days in idleness, they would labor abundantly with their hands. 19. And thus we see that when these Lamanites are brought to believe and to know the truth, they are firm 
and would suffer even unto death rather than commit sin. And thus we see that they buried their weapons of peace, or they buried the weapons of war for peace. Writing on gold, dickheads. I know. I keep harping on that. Get used to it. They're writing on gold. Don't make fucking sense. It's not like they're writing on parchment. You can sew a new section on. And the scroll just keeps getting bigger. You're writing on finite fucking space. And that's what this whole reading is uh, making quite clear. Cheers. And uh, hooray for Kentucky. Ah. It's good enough for Daniel Boone. It's good enough for me. All right. Ah. 20. And it came to pass that their brethren, the Lamanites, made prefer preparations for war and came up to the land of Nephi for the purpose of destroying the king and to place another in his stead and also of destroying the people of anti-Nephi-Lehi out of the land. 21. Now, when the people saw that they were coming against them, they went out to meet them and prostrated themselves before them to the earth and began to call on the name of the Lord. Time for a miracle, right? Yeah. Mir one miracle coming up, I think. All right. Let's see how prostrating works. Uh, reminds me, I got to get mine checked. Uh, 51 years old, folks. Uh, that's uh, and began to call on the name of the Lord, and thus they were in this attitude when the Lamanites began to fall upon them and began to slay them with the sword. What a fucking miracle that was. 22. And thus, without meeting any resistance, they did slay a thousand uh, a thousand and five of them. Must be a bitch. They'll be the last five. <laughs> uh, and they, uh, and we know that they were, they are, and we know that they are blessed, for they have gone to dwell with their God. Twenty-three. Now. When the Lamanites saw that their brethren would not flee from the sword, neither would, neither would they turn aside to the right hand or to the left, but that they would lie down and perish and praise God even in the very act of perishing under the sword. 24. Now, when the Lamanites saw this, they did forbear from slaying them. And there were many whose hearts had swollen in them for those of their brethren who had fallen under the sword, for they repented of the things which they had done. All gone. <laughs> Twenty-five. Maybe this is a wrong chapter to start with this. Very nice. Still like my scotch. Single malt. I think I learned that from a Raymond Chandler movie. Farewell, my lovely. Yeah, they said any other kind of shit. Stick with a single malt. <sighs> Twenty-five. And it came to pass that they threw down their weapons of war, and they would not take them again. For they were stung by for the murders which they had committed, 
and they had come down even as their their brethren, relying upon the mercies of those whose arms were lifted to slay them. Any next to my fucking laptop. <laughs> I've almost done that. This is a really dumb idea. That's why I love it. <sighs> yep. 26. It came to pass that the people of God were joined that day by more than a number of those who had been slain. Yeah, I believe that. There are no wake-up calls. Jonestown, you know, Heaven's Gate, Waco, nope. And this one, uh, so this Saturday, I hear some guy wants to jump off a cliff. He's timed it. He won't hit the bottom. He's going to get raptured on the way. He better check his time zone. It's supposed to be around 6 p.m., but I, I forget what time zone. Probably mine. Yeah. And those who had been slain were righteous people. Therefore, we have no reason to doubt that they were saved. It was worth it. 27. And these, wait, and there was not a wicked man slain, slain among them. <sighs> but... There were more than a thousand brought to the knowledge of the truth. Thus, we see that the Lord worketh in many ways uh, to the salvation of his people. Really? We see that? From this? Really? <sighs> Maybe it's this. <laughs> Oh. I lost my place. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong chapter. Uh, 28. Now, the great number of those of the Lamanites who slew so many of their brethren were Amalekites and Amulonites, the greatest number of whom were after the order of the Nehors. 29. Now, among those who joined the people of the Lord, there were none who were Amalekites or Amulonites, or who were of the order of, the, of Nehor, but they were actual descendants of Laman and Lemuel. 30. And thus, we can plainly discern that after a people have been once enlightened by the Spirit of God and have had great knowledge of things pertaining to righteousness and then have fallen away uh, into sin and transgression. Isn't sin transgression? And transgression sin? Uh, they become more hardened, and thus their state becomes worse than though they had e never known these things. And that is it for 24 of Alma. So, did we learn something? Sure did. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. I'll see you guys in uh, the next thrilling chapter. Trust me, some interesting shit's going to happen pretty soon. <laughs>